<laughs> if you want an example of how collectivist politicians openly and flagrantly show contempt for and hostility towards your rights as a sovereign individual, and how some in the media not only give that a pass, but applaud it, well, get ready as we explore the story of a congressman who wants to increase the tax for the boogeyman guns that they call assault rifles by a thousand percent. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. Here's the story. On June 13th, I got to report for MRC TV that Congressman Don Beyer, that great Democrat hero of Virginia, was floating the idea of a 1,000% tax on so-called assault rifles, an idea that faux American Indian Senator Liz Warren of Massachusetts, Democrat, said she could get behind, despite, of course, disarmed Indians being slaughtered by the U.S. government at places like Wounded Knee, South Dakota. Now, guess what? We have a follow-up. And we have some media-related wrinkles to add to the bargain. Bayer introduced his bill, H.R. 8051, a.k.a. the Assault Weapons Excise Act, the very next day after my initial report. It's being heard by the House Ways and Means Committee, and surprise, it's getting very easy and almost glowing coverage from some cadres of the collectivist press. On Thursday, July 14th, MSN carried a story from WZTV Fox 17, Nashville's Fox affiliate, and Nashville's Adrian Mojica, that in its first paragraph from Mr. Mojica, pushed tiresome and loaded terminology oft used by gun grabbers to prejudice readers, viewers, and listeners against firearms and those who might possibly want to exercise their right to own firearms. The word choice jumps out like a jackrabbit to start the piece. Check it out. Quote, a U.S. congressman has introduced a bill which would place a 1,000% excise tax on the sale of large capacity ammunition feeding devices and semi-automatic assault weapons, end quote, which first accepts the rhetoric Don Beyer employs in his bill, and second, assumes that you, the taxpayer forced to pay Beyer's salary and that of his staff, understand what Beyer and Mojica mean by assault weapons. And it also assumes, third, that there is a solid definition for assault weapon in the first place. <laughs> Miriam Webster's online dictionary, which, by the way, already has embraced wokeness and an Orwellian approach to communication about guns, well, they define assault weapon as, quote, any of various automatic or semi-automatic firearms, especially assault rifle. And assault rifle they define as, quote, any of various intermediate range magazine fed military rifles, such as the AK-47, that can be set for automatic or semi-automatic fire. Also, a rifle that resembles a military assault rifle, but is designed to allow only semi-automatic fire which is ambiguous and isn't really helpful in any way whatsoever. And it is precisely what people such as buyers seem to like. As Tactical Gear points out, in 1994, the federal government forced its own arbitrary and, in some big respects, ambiguous definition onto a whole host of firearms that previously weren't considered by actual gun owners to be assault rifles. Quote, within the military and firearm manufacturing communities, an assault rifle is defined as an automatic rifle. However, the assault weapons ban of 1994 adds additional features typically associated with military firearms to define certain firearms as assault weapons. The ban expired on September 13, 2004, but many still use its criteria as a basis to define assault weapons. And even automatic and semi-automatic usually go undefined by the politicians and pop media. Now, an automatic gun allows the wielder to keep the trigger pressed and release multiple rounds. 
Well, semi-automatic implies a lot more than it actually does. It implies that somehow it can fire more than one round per trigger pull, or that it could be put into such a beast mode when the shooter chooses to put it into that mode. But it can't. It's one round per trigger pull, but in three variations. There's single action, double action, single action, and double action. Now, they can allow more ready positioning of the hammer and the rounds, cutting down on firing time, but they don't turn a gun into some automatic gun or even kind of automatic gun. It just doesn't work that way. I think the key here that I want to make sure I express is that all of this nitpickery about the term assault weapon and what that means merely serves as tacit acceptance of an illegitimate presumption. And that presumption is that the government can employ its vast ill-gotten resources to attack your natural right to keep and bear arms in the first place. Now, politicians like Bayer, they don't call it an attack. But this 1,000% tax is intended to have the same effect as a ban, raising the price of an AR-15 to as high as $20,000. But of course, carried out via the federal government's constitutionally granted power to initiate excise taxes on goods sold within the U.S. Quote, Representative Beyer says since the bill is a revenue measure, the Senate could pass it with a simple majority. Ah, yes, a revenue bill. <laughs> because everybody knows the feds care so much about balancing their cosmic expenditures with their intake of seized cash, right? Yeah, surely revenue is the impetus for H.R. 8051. <laughs> well, the history of central bank purchases of U.S. bonds to facilitate both federal debt and government expansion far beyond the tax intake they bring in, well, that stands as a manifest contradiction to the implication that this is about keeping the budget in line and bringing in some money. <laughs> Clearly, it's about making firearms like AR-15s prohibitively expensive. Excise tax victims must keep sales records that they will have to, of course, make accessible to government eyes. I wonder if they'll be wearing red coats. And if they don't, then they'll be entering the black market. As I said, that's precisely where more gun sales will migrate if insane tactics like buyers in this bill hit those people who want to buy guns. Of course, Buyers like King George is prepared to threaten anyone who wants to exercise the inherent right to own a firearm and engage in peaceful commerce. WZTV's Mojica tells us, quote, there is also an exemption in the bill for federal, state, and local governments so that armed services and law enforcement agencies would not be affected. Because, of course, agents of the state and its coercion and threats have to be better armed than the people so that they can get into their places and surveil them and take their stuff. Well, I certainly know that old King George tried to make sure of that when on April 19th, 1775, he sent British troops to collect private weapons stored in Lexington and Concord. I wonder why after 250 years, almost, people like Byers haven't learned the lesson of Lexington and Concord. Well, perhaps he just wants to avoid the ethics about rights and morals that lie at the heart of the American Revolution. And perhaps he actually has learned about that, but he chooses to oppose those ethics and rights and morals, just like King George. Ah, yes, the kings. They have different titles, but they still try to lord it over us, don't they? Hey, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Please like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Hit the plus button on Rumble. Remember, no censorship at Rumble. Love that site. And please spread the videos far and wide. Visit mrctv.org. That's mrctv.org as often as you can. Take some of those stories and share them with friends. And of course, we'll see you at the MRC store, the Media Research Center in its 35th year. Excellent. So, so cool. And also, um, if you want to find us, we're on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, 
on uh, uh, TikTok, and I'm on Twitter at Gard Goldsmith, and I'm on Gab at Gardner Goldsmith. For MRC TV, thanks for watching.